G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Um, today I'm going to be responding to a user request which I decided to build an example tutorial for. Um, they asked in this case how you can find the closest point parallel or perpendicular upon another surface from one point. Now it's, it seems like a simple question but there's actually a lot of considerations in this. Uh, for example, what if your point is outside the domain of the surface from a perpendicular aspect. So it introduces the concepts of planes as well. Um, so overall we're going to be working a lot with geometry today. For people that have followed my channel for a while you'll know I typically work with data. I don't tend to actually cover too much geometry because it's, it's not that often that you'll find a practical use uh, for geometry and dynamo compared to processing data. There's still many cases but I don't really come across them as often so my videos don't tend to reflect that. Anyway, um, today I'm going to be using Dynamo and Revit 2020. Um, I'm not actually going to be using any custom packages, just basic geometry logic. Um, so let's get started. So the testing environment for this specific script is quite experimental. Um, it's two walls forming a corridor. Um, and let's imagine that we're trying to take um, something down this corridor and at a certain point uh, we will run out of clearance. So we need to know when that occurs. Uh, maybe they're going to put some signage in the corridor or maybe they're just going to design the space so that they don't put a space so far down this corridor that a piece of equipment can't go down it. So this is sort of like just a rhetorical scenario. Um, I don't usually work with geometry on the channel because I don't find that many scenarios where I run into using it, at least in a direct way like this. But in this case, we're going to use closest point on surface as a technique. So we're going to begin firstly by getting a surface. So I'm going to be looking for the select face node. And you're going to want to pick one side of the corridor. And now in Dynamo, as a preview, we should be able to see that particular face. We're also going to want to pick a point on face. So in this case, I'm going to look for the select point on face node. I think in the library, these are both located under the selection part of the library. And I'm just going to pick an arbitrary point. So now we should see a point in Dynamo. Now we can't see the other surface right now, which makes it a little bit confusing. So you may wish to also just go and also pick that face. So you can sort of visualize the entire scenario in Dynamo as well using preview geometry. Now at this point, I'm gonna maximize Dynamo because I can pretty much see my testing environment in the preview space. Um, if you do want to move the preview around, you can just switch using this button up here. Um, and we can sort of just get ourselves into a good alignment so that we can sort of script above our preview over here. So let's begin firstly just by dealing with this point on the face. We're going to find um, the shortest distance to the wall and naturally because this is within the domain of the wall's extent it's going to be the parallel point on the surface or the closest point in this case. So what I'm going to do is go to closest point two. So this node is really useful for this particular type of task. We're going to say that to this face, from this point, we want to find the closest point. And we can see now we have a point across the other side of the surface. We can actually just check the distance of this um, using the distance to node as well. And from our initial point, we can check the distance between them. And we can see that at that point, we're dealing with a clearance of 2684 millimeters. We can also visualize that point by just building a line from the start to the end. So the start being one side and the end being the other. We can then see that if we change the point on face, we're going to essentially move where that relationship occurs and that distance is also going to change as well. At some point, you might find an interesting scenario like this, or maybe, maybe this. Notice that because there's a door in the wall, it's not actually going to find the closest point across the corridor because it's cutting a hole out of the wall. So what I actually recommend doing in this case is finding the underlying plane of the wall, assuming it's flat. So in this case, what you can do instead um, is look for a plane by origin normal. So we need to find an origin point on that surface and then we need to give it a normal vector as well. So what we're going to do is analyze this face um, at a parameter. So we're going to just get a UV parameter. Um, now we're going to be getting in this case a point by parameter actually. So I'm going to look for point by parameter. And somewhere in here there should be a node for finding. Yeah. Sometimes it can be pretty difficult to find some of these nodes. Um, I find, there we go, point at parameter. So we're going to take that face that we're dealing with and we're going to find the point at the UV of 0.5.5, which is the middle, the middle of the face. 
And in this case, we also want to check the normal at that point as well. We can use these two things to build the plane using the plane by origin normal. So I'm also going to get um, normal at parameter and using the same surface and the same UV, we're going to check the normal at that point as well. I can now take our origin and our vector and now I have an infinite plane instead of the face itself. So now if I instead do the closest point to that, that, uh, that plane instead of the face, we'll get a different result. Notice that now it ignores the hole in the door. It's dealing with an infinite plane. What this also means is, let's say your corridor actually is shorter, but you want to test it, I guess, from an infinite perspective. You want to extrapolate the corridor. So notice in this case, actually I need to do the other side. Notice in this case, the plane extends on uh, technically forever. Um, it's as good as I know, infinite, maybe semi-infinite. And in this case, you can see it's still able to comprehend that plane as an extension of the wall surface. But we'll bring that back and we'll just bring those doors back as well. Um, so let's say that we want to check when a certain point in the corridor becomes too narrow. So what we're going to have to do is analyze the surfaces many, many times to generate a set of test points and then find which one is too short to accommodate. So I'm going to maximize this again. So instead of using a point on a face, we're going to generate lots of points along the corridor. So again, we're going to be generating a point at parameter. And now we're actually going to be using uh, the face itself. So we're going to take this face instead, the opposite side of the corridor. And we're going to generate some U and V coordinates. Now in this case, we're going to want to use a U coordinate of probably 0.5. We'll just work halfway up the wall. You can see that this is the point over here right now. It's at 0.5 and 0. Um, in this case, we're going to build a series of numbers to create points at. So we're going to build a range for our V coordinates. So I'm going to say 0, dot, dot, 1. So I'm building a range using the dot, dot syntax. I'm going to do, do dot, dot. And then in this case, I'm going to do 0 0.01. So we're going to generate 100 test points across here. So if I run this and I set it to longest lacing, we now have one point. 100 points across the extent of the UV coordinates for this surface. Now what I can do with these is instead I can actually compare these as a closest point too. And I'm going to need to also set this one to longest lacing. And now for each point we have a corresponding point that is parallel across the corridor to the plane of the underlying surface of the wall. Now instead I can take my parameter and my line and you can see now that we're it's actually analyzing the, the corridor at regular intervals. Now you can obviously decrease or increase the number of test points you have. Let's say you want to maybe do double. You can see I can double the frequency of those test points. For now, I'm just gonna work with 100 of them. Um, now what we need to do here is detect when one of these lines becomes smaller than a particular condition. So what I'm gonna do here is first of all, I'm gonna get the length of each of these. You could do distance too as well, but I actually want to retrieve some of these points later on as a set. So a curve is actually an easier element to work with. So I actually want um, curve length, not string length. There we go. So we now have a number and we also have uh, the, the extent of the curve as a line. So what I'm going to do now is check when, I'm going to check when something is actually smaller than a particular threshold. So in this case, I'm just going to generate a number slider. And let's say we want to check if it's smaller than 100 up to 3000 with a step of maybe 10. And now I can generate a clearance number. Let's say we want to look for the first point where the clearance is less than 1330. I'm going to filter my original list. So I only am left with the lines that are shorter than this number. And I might just start going back and turning off a few previews because now we just want to have a look at the lines that meet the criteria. So at this point now, we're going to check their length again. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a means of sorting the list of curves and taking the last item, which will be the biggest. So to do this, I'm going to use a sort by keynode using the length of the curve as the keys to sort by. So I'll take my curve objects and I'll sort them based on their length. So we can now see, uh, in this case, I believe, possibly the length of this probably isn't quite going to work. There we go. So I might actually increase the minimum minimum width of this. So I'll go 1,500 up to 5,000. 
There we go. On a certain point, we can see that the whole corridor is wider than about 2 metres, actually. So once we hit about 2130, that's where we start complying. So what I'll do is say 2200 up to 5000. There we go. And now we can start to see what happens as we increase this range. We filter out less curves. And then we're going to take the largest item, which is going to have the biggest distance, which is the last item in the list of curves. So what I can do is take last item in that case. And now we can see that we have the final curve from that set uh, that is at that minimum uh, width on the corridor itself. Now one challenge you might face is that we've sort of created some geometry which can be previewed in Revit. If you can't see that, that's okay. What you can do is go to View, Background 3D Preview, Available Previews, and you can turn on or off the Revit Background Preview. So I can disable that as well. Um, in this case, what I can do to represent this element is place an adaptive component in Revit driven by these two points to represent it in the Revit modeling environment. So I can actually see it in 3D and have a look at it in drawings. So what I'm gonna do is create a new family and I'm going to use, in this case, the generic model adaptive template. I'm just going to temporarily minimize Dynamo, and I'm just going to create two points, select them both, and make them adaptive. And I'm just going to connect them with a spline through points. So this is a model line. We'll be able to see it in 3D. I'm just going to save this family. And I'm just going to call this, in this case, a corridor checker. I'm going to load this into my project. And I might just um, might place one and then purge. So in this case, you can see that I placed it uh, just by clicking once and twice. So going one point, two point. So what we can do is use Dynamo to place this based on those two ends of the curve we found. So in this case, we're going to get the start point and also the end point. We're going to turn these into a list. Now, there's some slightly more efficient ways to do what I just did, but that's probably a really simple way to do it. Um, we're going to create adaptive components, but I found that actually the adaptive component uh, component uh, actually expects a list of lists. So even if you have one element, you still need it to be a list that contains one set of points. So we're going to list create again, just to create a list of lists of points. I'm then going to look for the adaptive component by points node. These are my points. And I'm just going to get a family types drop down. And we're going to look for that corridor checker. There it is. As soon as we connect this, we can see that now we have an adaptive component placed in our model. So we can see where that point occurs in our corridor. Now, because I'm running in Revit in automatic mode, as I make changes, it's going to refresh that component. So if I actually change this slider, notice that the line in Revit is also moving in line with the points. So we've essentially created a pretty dynamic script um, that is able to work really well in automatic mode um, in order to analyze the width and the minimum width of a corridor and the point when you may not wish to go past. Let's say if um, we were saying, where's it less than three meters? Maybe we're working in a hospital. Um, obviously not a very good corridor for a hospital, but let's say maybe past this point, we, we can't achieve an equipment clearance. So we shouldn't actually put any rooms beyond that point that can't support that type of equipment. So hopefully this has been an interesting tutorial just to show you how you can use points and parameters and surfaces and the logic of using the closest point to a surface, um, which was a really good user request. Um, and, and yeah, it helped people learn more about geometry in Dynamo as well. So hopefully that was a helpful tutorial, especially for some people that have been requesting a little bit more on geometry on the channel for a while. Um, we covered a lot of fundamental principles there about analyzing geometry, such as uh, working across UV domains and also closest points and measuring distances. Um, also converting points and lines into adaptive components as well. Um, I definitely need to get some better lighting. Um, some people have mentioned my videos are quite dark at night, and, and they are. Um, so hopefully there'll be a studio light <laughs> across from me eventually making things a bit easier to look at. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks, take care, bye.